and grass was created to minimize and fight the great threats great apes are facing and in most in most countries habitat loss and fragmentation is the biggest threat there are many others including poaching and bushmeat diseases such as ebola conflict and instability and a few more at the request of the Indonesian government, and that issue was um, also discussed at the board meeting in Grasp two years ago, we decided to provide some kind of practical advice to the government once it comes to land use planning. And I'm going to present the findings of a study we did last year, and we did in collaboration with ECRAF, PanEco, Yell, Grid Arendal, and um, Ian was involved at some stages um, in, this, in that study. Just as a side product of this, um, ECRAF also published um, a small policy note, Coexistence of People and Orang Utan in Sumatra, and used some of the data we provided. I have a few copies of the study with me, and we'll put them on the, on the desk later. But also, you can visit the web page indicated below where you can download the report. You will find ebooks, maps, videos, posters. So it will give you a much better idea of what we have been doing last year. OK, the, um, the key topic for us was how can we provide economic incentives to conserve orangutan habitats? And what we did first is we looked at um, an overlay of great ape habitat and carbon, and I think it was um, it came up in one of the previous discussions this morning that we, high, we have a high conversion of bio, high, areas of high biodiversity and of high carbon potential. So that was the first step, looking to where's the best overlay, where's the potential to include high, bio, high biodiversity areas, is there potential for other? <coughs> payment for ecosystem services schemes, and finally, what are the benefits for communities? So we decided to compare two pilot sites, the swamp forest on Pete in Tripa and the mountain forest in Batangtoro, and both areas are in uh, Sumatra. Now we calculate potential income from Red Plus, and other forms of payment for ecosystem services and compared those figures with income from current land use forms, including oil palm. And just to bring the two sides a bit closer, when you look at the four, the four maps, you see that the green area has significantly reduced. The major deforestation drivers include encroachment by migrants, illegal logging, plantation expansion, and potential road development. And opportunities include carbon, water, sustainable forest management, tourism, and non timber forest program. And here's a major deforestation driver is soil palm. Um, when we look into the four, the first farm for Batonto, you see that most of the land has been converted to disturbed forest. While when we look at the second farm for tree farm, um, almost 50% of the land has, um, has been converted to oil plantations. And let's start with the carbon, and then we go to the, um, to the left on map and look at the above ground carbon stocks. First, um, the highest carbon stocks are also the areas which are inhabited by over over mutants. The picture is a little bit different when you look at the below ground carbon stocks because the carbon stocks are very high, the below ground carbon stocks are very high on peatland, as everybody knows, and that's where the tree park landscape is, but it's a little on mineral soils in the Batantoro mountain forests. When we now look at the land use values, um, and again, when I present the figures from Batatoro on the top, and for three at the bottom, you see oil palm is the number of mountain country agricultural development. In both, in both sides, oil palm generates more income than any other form of agricultural activity. However, the figures are quite different. Um, 
100% exit is the same as those on law presented, but I think we also have almost a factor, yeah, not almost, but, uh, but we still generate more income from an oil palm plantation on mineral soils. Um, you have to be a bit careful with the scale because I have to fix it in one, I want to fix it in one slide, and the scale is different. Um, on the top, it only goes from 0 to 12, and it's a bottom from 0 to 24. Roses and thousand dollars. But um, the key message here is um, how much carbon money do we, do we need and how much carbon money can we generate to compete with this form of agriculture activity. And I have to add a few lines on this because we had to make a few assumptions and we simply decided um, we are only looking into voluntary carbon markets because we don't know. Weather and when that would be including Kyoto weather at all, there would be a follow up of Kyoto Protocol. So we only look into the uh, voluntary carbon markets and um, then we use two scenarios. One um, is the uh, blue one at the bottom, um, which, where we use um, a fixed rate for a fixed carbon price, and then we have the green one where um, prices for carbon are appreciating over time. When you then compare the two graphs, you see that in the case of tree farm, it can really easily compete with, um, with the potential income from oil plant development. And of course, the major reason is because there should be so much carbon stored below, below, the, uh, below the ground. That's different in Baton Togo. Um, we just come up with all, when we look into the range of um, potential carbon income, it always almost equals potentially <laughs> and I think also one issue which came up in the previous um, um, previous um, presentation was um, what is the, the cost for a ton of carbon you would need to basically outcompete oil plant development and again the scenario is quite different between Baton Togo and Tweepa First, um, oil palm on mineral soils generates more income, and second, we have less carbon stored on mineral soils. So, um, we, I think my figure is a bit um, lower than um, what um, Dora presented. We calculated 10.8 um, USD per ton carbon would be needed, um, I think, before we saw something like um, 17. We would need to look into the details how we calculate it. But the bottom, I mean, the key messages are the same. In, in three parts, it's much easier, and there's a lot of carbon stored, and it's a, a very important one with habitat. Um, then I just want to, to mention a, little, a discussion we also had at the Hanoi Forum in Malaysia, and the issue whether um, carbon could help to um, conserve and maintain little corridors of small, small scale of forest pockets inside um, oil plantations all around, and I think it would indeed work if the government law permits to, uh, to keep these um, forest patches. And I think in that respect, law in um, Malaysia is quite different from the law in Indonesia. But from a carbon point of view, I think it's a valid option to use uh, um, carbon finances to um, keep these um, forests intact, although these are small problems. So now I want to see um, how far other um, ecosystem services can help to generate um, additional income. And we took these figures from the working report from 2009. And when we add all these environmental services together, we could potentially generate something around 3,500 USD per hectare. So then another key question was, where would all that money go to and who would benefit? from additional income from a, let's say, conservation scenario. And we again compare a deforestation or business usage scenario with a conservation scenario. And the biggest difference actually is the level of the local community. While the local government and the national government would benefit from both scenarios because they benefit in the form of taxes, um, the local community would benefit unproportionately from a conservation scenario why the elite industry would benefit less from a conservation scenario.
let me just um, try to conclude and make a few recommend recommendations. The current value of 4,000 people and it's estimated that 3,700 to 11,000 um, USD per hectare for a 25 year period. This is higher than, um, than, than for all other land use forms, except for oil and oil. So coming back to the cheaper scenario, on peak land, the situation is different. You could potentially generate income in the range of 7,422,000 USD per hectare over 25 years period, and this is sufficient to offset the opportunity costs for the conversion of primary forest oil concentrations. And when we then add other, the value of other ecosystem services, around 3,700 USD per hectare, and this would make the conservation scenario really competitive in comparison to all the other alternative land use forms. So now we have to discuss, um, even though on the um, conservation scenario might be economically viable, the country still wants to develop and to increase its oil palm production. And as one of the key recommendations for the report is that the government should focus further resource development, including the plan expansion of oil palm on the current use value lands. And of course, one should take into account all the social and environmental implications. And when you take a look at the, at the map and you look at the, um, at the red areas, all these are areas which are potentially suitable for agriculture activities, but they are outside the range of the Rangoon Tons or the Rangoon Habitat. So there is still potential for further development and to reconcile conservation and development. I think that's quite important, and at the end, I just want to, to give you um, some um, comparable figures on what we can expect as a carbon potential. And when we look at the oil pump first, there's a big difference whether we plant oil pump on degraded lands or on primary forest lands. If you compare the figures for oil pump with undisturbed forest, we basically have a, a different of factor five. But if you plant oil palm on cleared land and degraded land, oil palm actually can, um, can improve uh, the potential for farming stocks. And just to, to lead to the global picture, um, you have seen the map um, with the orangutans, but it's similar to for the other great eight species. Many of them live in areas which are of um, high um, calm potential. And I want to end my, my presentation with a photo. Uh, I took it in Sahara and not in Sumatra, but um, I, as you can see, it's a long jump, and we just hope that the, uh, the one can, um, can make a long jump and can still survive for uh, the next uh, 25 or 50 years. Um, I, I have additional slides on, um, on the green economy. I, I didn't put it into this presentation, but if the discussion goes more into this, I'm more than happy to provide additional information and how far Red Plus can use to kickstart a national transformation process. And I think I just stopped here so we have more time for questions.